I started getting a lot of questions, especially on YouTube from young males about porn, pornography and masturbation. They were asking whether or not masturbation was bad. They were asking whether or not masturbation with ejaculation was particularly bad. And here's my stance on this. I'm a biologist and a neuroscientist, not a psychologist. But what we know for sure is that if an individual repeatedly engages in this circuitry, let's say, say masturbation and pornography with increasingly potent forms of stimulation that are on a screen, yeah. a couple of things happen. First of all, what's being reinforced? What's being reinforced is a high dopaminergic response to watching other people engage in sexual behavior, which is very different than being in a first person sexual experience. Okay, so right there, you know that what's being reinforced is not actually any kind of improvement in communication yeah, skills. It's voyeurism. it's voyeurism. And as these questions started to come in more and more, I started to realize there was a lot of kind of undertones of people talking about fear of or experience with sexual dysfunction that clearly pornography yeah, can lead yeah. to. And here I'm specifically talking about males. I actually don't know the literature on females. Females don't use visual pornography to the same degree. I see. They use literary pornography. I see. And then you start to think about, okay, what happens in the cascade or the arc of sexual arousal and orgasm? What happens is that initially it's parasympathetically dominant, meaning if somebody is too uh, stressed, they actually can't engage in sexual behavior. The arousal response doesn't occur. Erection is blunted. But the actual orgasm response and ejaculation is strongly associated with the so-called sympathetic nervous system, which has nothing to do with sympathy. It's a kind of a stress response. And then it reverses to a parasympathetic response. And then a hormone called prolactin increases dramatically after ejaculation in males. What does that do? That blunts dopamine release and testosterone for a very long period of time, which makes sense if pair bonding and sort of, you know, in our species anywhere, there's this idea that then other molecules will be exchanged with partners, pair bonding, potential for raising mates, etc. Without getting into a huge discussion about that, the point is this, masturbation and pornography are potently tapping into the dopamine system and can undermine the very processes of finding a mate, dating, communication, eventually, if it's appropriate, sexual well, interaction, et cetera. Like it's undermining pair bonding. If you're seeking sexual release through pornography and you go through the whole cycle and you get a prolactin release, do you bond with yourself? Huh. So this is very interesting. The biology explains it as what's left there is a kind of an open loop a kind of an emptiness because bonding with the self is a complicated notion. There's a healthy version of that, of course, loving oneself. But in the absence of a real sexual partner, there's an open loop of neurochemicals, including oxytocin and prolactin. The dopamine, remember, dopamine goes up during pursuit, anticipation, then peaks and then crashes below baseline after orgasm and ejaculation. So this kind of low that people fear is putting them into an A-motivated state. We can think of this, if I were to kind of expand on it, would be it's this, it's this kind of um, neurochemical, psychological equivalent of making your home environment filthy for a while, not actually putting you into this a positive amplification of dopamine. So it depletes the dopamine system. I don't think we need to be entirely afraid of pursuing or engaging in things that release dopamine. Obviously, healthy sexual behavior, food that we love, social engagement, all of these things can be dopaminergic. It's the big peaks in dopamine that are not associated with any prior effort or organization of self that are particularly dangerous for the human being. Yeah, well, you could see that that's a cardinal danger of affluence then. You know, you cannot get rats addicted to cocaine if they live in their natural environments. You can only get rats addicted to cocaine if they're isolated rats in a cage. Yeah, they won't bar press for cocaine in a natural environment, and it's because they have alternative sources of dopaminergic gratification. I think it's reasonable to assume that there's an a novelty edge in pornography, like there is in so many quasi-addictive phenomena. Because novelty is a sexual kick, it has to stay novel, and that means that over time it's going to become more extreme. So that's not good. Well, so how do you resensitize yourself in some sense? Well, you stop, you stop, and then hopefully you recover. And then you deprive yourself of that outlet, let's say. And you might say, well, you know, is, is that absolutely necessary? And maybe there's nothing wrong with pornography. It's like, well, I don't know, man. Have you ever really met a guy who is proud of that? You know what I mean? That makes him feel like I'm the guy, man. I'm watching pornography and getting off. It's like, what a man. I don't believe anyone feels that. And to me, that's an indication that, yeah, we know. No, it's pretty cheap. The research evidence shows that if you introduce pornography into a community, that rates of sexual crime committed by men upon women actually decline. So there is perhaps some utility in the outlet, 
But, you know, that's a unidimensional analysis and doesn't take into account all the other effects of pornography. It's a non-trivial technological problem, you know. It's now possible for young men to look at more beautiful nude women in one day than any man has ever seen prior to 10 years ago, 20 years ago, than any man in history had ever seen. That's not nothing. That's something. And to think that doesn't do anything to you, that likely does something to you. Don't substitute the false for the real. And don't underestimate the utility of deprivation. What do we need to drive us forward to have the adventure of our life? Some deprivation, that's for sure. That heightens desire and drive. And maybe you need that. You're afraid to approach a woman. Well, you remove part of your drive with pornography. And so now you don't have that sexual urge to overcome that anxiety. And so you stay timid for your entire life. It doesn't look to me like pornography is really a very good idea. I don't think it's helping anyone. Now, you know, I, there might be codicils to that. Freedom of expression, some potential educational utility, the pleasure that's a consequence of sexual utilization of pornographic material. But I would still say, seeing all that, that it's not a net social good. It doesn't do the people who produce it or who consume it any good. And I don't believe that anyone feels like a better human being after a, utilizing pornography for sexual gratification. Now you might say, well, that's because they've been shamed about sex since they're born and, you know, and that's a consequence of our crooked culture and in a utopian world we wouldn't have that shame and yeah, no. It's way more complicated than that. I read something in one of the YouTube comments in my video the other day. I was talking to Abigail Schreier about the apparent fact that today's teenagers are having much less sex. One person commented that there's the shame that men feel when sex is a spectator sport rather than a participatory act. And then you think, well, the mere fact that you're watching two other people, one of whom isn't you having sex, instead of having sex, it implies something about your desirability. It's pretty hard to shake that, isn't it? Or your courage. Why is it that you're sitting there alone at night with your laptop on your lap? What the hell's wrong with you? Well, nothing. It's just, we should dispense with sexual shame. It's like, no, probably not. That's probably not the answer. It should become obvious why things like pornography not just the accessibility of pornography, but the intensity of pornography can negatively shape real world romantic and sexual interactions. This is a serious concern. The discussion is happening now. And this isn't to pass judgment on whether or not people like or don't like pornography. That's an ethical discussion. And it's a moral discussion that has to be decided for each individual by virtue of age, etc. But any activity that evokes a lot of dopamine release will make it harder to achieve the same level and certainly the greater level of dopamine through a subsequent interaction. So yes, indeed, many people are addicted to pornography and yes, indeed, many people who regularly indulge in pornography experience challenges in real world romantic interaction.